Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Becky Robinson. I'm the founder and CEO of Weaving Influence, and we're going to be getting started in just a few moments with today's webinar. It's so great to see several of you coming in. So if you could take a moment and say hello in the chat, I would be thrilled uh, to be able to hear where you're calling in from today. I'm in my office in Lambertville, Michigan on a beautiful sunny fall day. It's pretty amazing. So thank you again for being with us today. And if you want to tell us hello in the chat, I would love to hear from you. So I'm going to give folks a few more minutes before I dive into today's content. Um, well, wow, hello in Ukraine. I hope you're safe and well. Hi, Mike in La Crosse, Wisconsin. It's great to see you. It looks like you guys use the drop down menu and uh, everyone can see your comments. So we would welcome you to engage with your fellow participants today. Um, we love to create inclusive community here at Weaving Influence. We hope you feel welcomed and included in all of our events. Uh, just a quick side note, I forgot all about this webinar this morning, so I came to work in my running clothes, but thankfully we have these brand new branded t-shirts um, to celebrate our 10th anniversary. So I just changed into one of those. So what you see is what you get with me. So hello to Regina in Country Club Hills, Illinois. And today's topic is branding. This is a topic I've covered before, but I have a few new ideas and thoughts today. So if you're aware or not aware, we do have all of our book marketing webinars available for free on our YouTube channel. And so you can always access our past topics and content on the YouTube channel. So as we get started today, I want to do a quick poll to find out where you are as it relates to this topic of branding. So where are you on your branding journey? Are you very clear about your brand? Are you developing your brand? Are you rebranding now? Are you confused about your brand or have you not begun to develop your brand? And I'm going to leave the poll up for a moment. You know, it may be that you don't even know what I'm talking about when I say branding. So when you think about your online presence, you know, as you begin to, to build your online presence or even your offline presence, your brand is really the image that people have of you. It's your memorability in the world. It's what you want to be known for. So hopefully that definition is helpful. And it looks like a few of you have replied to the poll. I'd love to see a bit more participation. So if you want to take a moment and uh, answer the poll, I can show you the results in just a moment. Um, it looks like so far um, there are just so far one, one of you is very, well, two of you are very clear about your brand. Seven of you are developing your brand. One person is doing some rebranding. So thanks for taking time. I will end the poll. So if you are in the process of developing your brand, you might have brought some specific questions to today's webinar, and I'd be happy to answer those specific questions more toward the end of the call. In the meantime, I do have some slides that I can share as we talk through branding together. So, you know, when you start to think about branding, um, one of the things you want to think about is this question of what do you want to be known for? And so really, your brand is something that can be deliberate. It's something that you choose. Um, it's something that can change over time. If you change your topic area or your area of contribution, or you know, maybe you make a radical shift in what you're up to. So let me uh, give an example of that. Um, I am working with some authors right now and they have a new book coming out in February on the topic of psychological safety. Now, in the past, they may have worked on other topics, but one of their priorities of bringing this new book to market is to become the go-to thought leaders in this area of psychological safety and specifically implementing psychological safety. So they are saying, well, what do you want to be known for? I want to be known for psychological safety. So for those of you who are on the call, if you are working on branding right now, I would love to see in the chat, you know, what is it that you want to be known for? And I'll just quickly mention and note that, you know, it's really, really easy for me to answer the question, what do I want to be known for? I want to be known for supporting authors in marketing nonfiction business books. And so one of the games that I'm playing about branding, and you can just see it, is uh, behind me are posters. And if I push my camera up a little bit, you'll notice those are the book launches that my team and I do. And we have posters all around the office. 
of a decade of launching business books, um, you know, more than 160 of them. And so even the decor in my office is designed to reinforce the brand and what I want to be known for. So, um, you know, hopefully that's why you showed up today because you know me for uh, giving great, smart, actionable advice to people who are launching business books, marketing business books. So I'd love to see in the chat, what is it that you want to be known for? Um, are you able to articulate clearly what you want to be known for? So I would love to see that in the chat. Um, so as we dive in a little bit deeper on branding, and I'll, I'll keep watching the chat in case any of you respond, um, I want to just share a brief story. So over time, I've worked with a lot, a lot, a lot of authors, and sometimes this topic of branding is a little bit confusing, and I had a client one day write to me, uh, as, as he was getting very frustrated in trying to identify what his brand could or should be. And he said, I've got it. I've got it. And he sent me this picture. He said, I think that my brand is, you know, I need a dunce cap because he felt so confused and overwhelmed by trying to identify what his brand might be. So one of my goals on this call is that you would not feel like a dunce, uh, that you would have a clear idea of what branding is and would get some support as you develop your brand. I know for a fact that one of my uh, heroes is, is represented on this call by her assistant. So Bev K. Um, I don't know if any of you know the name Bev K, but um, you know, Bev K has a, a very, very clear and easy to identify brand. I think in order to see the chat, I have to stop sharing my slides. Uh, hey, Darren, it's great to see you. So you want to be known for building faith and resilience through difficult circumstances. I love that. Thank you for sharing. It looks like Mike wants to brighten lives through fulfilling work. Uh, fantastic. Now, just a quick side note. Once you're really clear about what you want to be known for, a good gut check is to um, go to your website and ask yourself, is my brand clearly articulated through my website? So if you want to be known for a particular thing, and, and some of you are putting those words onto the chat, and I appreciate that, you want to make sure that when people land on your website, they can immediately connect with and understand what your brand is, you know, what it is that you're trying to do. You also want to make sure that people know um, who, who this um, brand is for. So um, I would encourage you as some homework from today's webinar, go on your own website and try to look at it with fresh eyes, like you've never seen it before, like you don't know who you are and identify like, would you know, does it match the words that you're, that you're putting here? You know, you could even take these words that you've written in the chat and you could edit your website copy so that those words are among the first words that people see. So thank you to Sally and Stella and Dennis, all of these friends on today's call. I love, I love it. Um, and uh, so I mentioned Bev K. Uh, for those of you who know Bev K, you might know that she um, has written a ton of books on the career development journey. And so I would say one of the things that kind of typifies Bev's brand is, is this uh, offbeat, a creative approach to talking about career development. I don't know, uh, Bev, I think Bev's assistant's on the call. Tell me how I did. Um, the other thing about uh, brand is you, you also can be known kind of by how you show up visually in the world. So a quick story about this. I met with a potential client earlier in the week who happened to go to my website and I, I, I showed this on Facebook. But one of the things he said to me toward the end of the call is, well, I almost didn't reach out to you because your photos on your website, I could tell, and this is what he said. He said, I could tell you were nerdy, bookish, you know, smart, you know, welcoming, warm, like he's getting all of this from my headshot. But I thought you were in your 20s. And I wasn't sure you had enough experience to serve me, which I laughed. If you know me, I'm 51 years old. There's no world in which those photos look like I'm 20. But at any rate, you know, people get to know your brand uh, by visually how you show up. All right. So uh, some things that you can think about as you try to 
um, identify or develop your brand, one thing is to remember that your brand already exists. So if you're not clear about how you want to bring your brand to online spaces, one of the things you can do is ask other people for their input. You know, ask them, you know, I did this once in an email newsletter. I said, hey, what do you think of when you think of me? What, what's my brand to you? I had one guy wrote back, I think of glasses and curly hair, right? So you can ask questions uh, of people. You can ask your clients. You can ask your colleagues. You can ask your friends. Um, another thing you can do is you can say, like, is this on brand for me or is it off brand for me? So I will often be heard saying, like, oh, well, I can't do that. That's off brand. So I don't know if this is resonating with you, but that's something that I think about, you know, one way to tell what your brand is by is by identifying what your brand is not. Um, OK, so here's something that authors specifically sometimes have a question about. So when you think about branding, what's the primary brand that you want to put forward in the world? Is it your book? Is it your business or is it you? And this is something that I think every individual has to navigate carefully. You know, do you put your energy around, like, I want people to rem remember my business. I want people to remember weaving influence. Or do you put energy around your book? And for me, that would be, I want, I want to make sure that people remember reach. Um, or do you put the uh, energy around, do you want, um, people to remember you. So I want people to remember Becky Robinson. So let's just pause for a moment in the chat. And if you are someone who's been trying to navigate this, you have a book, you have, a, let's see, a business, and then you have yourself. Which of those three feels most important to you to build in the world? Is it your book? Is it your business? Or is it you? Um, I would love to see that from you in the chat. So Sally says it's business. Stella says business. Um, anybody else? Uh, Jane says me. Patricia says business. Um, so I think that's what's tricky. Obviously, there are iconic business brands that people remember. So I have Coca-Cola on my cup. You know, everybody recognizes the brand of Coca-Cola. I could not tell you the name of Coca-Cola's CEO. Um, and so for those of us who have smaller businesses or if the business is only us as an individual, I think that what typically happens is that people remember us. So Stella, I know you. So if I've worked with you, I might say like, you know, to be honest, Stella, I've worked with you. I cannot remember the name of your business brand. I can't. Um, maybe reframe work I, is something that you're branding with. Yes. But um, so th this is another place where you could ask your customers or colleagues, hey, when you think of the work that I do in the world, what do you think of? Now, I know for me, I do have a business that's a bit bigger than me. And so I've intentionally over the years work to brand my business as something separate from me. Um, but then there are some people who will just say like, well, go work with Becky. They're not saying go work with Weaving Influence. Um, Alexandra says, don't they all go together? Alexandra, yes, they definitely all go together. And likely if you have all three of those, you have yourself uh, as a thought leader or an author in the world, you have your book, um, you have your business, you have to work on branding all of them. But I guess one thing I want you to come away with is that ultimately the most important brand is you um, because you are kind of the entry point to those other brands that you may be trying to build in the world. Um, so let me just go back to my slides, make sure we're covering all the high points today. Um, all right, so one of the things you wanna think about is how your brand shows up around the internet. And these images were taken of various bios of mine before I created a consistent brand identity with new headshots uh, before my book came out earlier this year. So this is actually a slide that shows you what not to do. So if you notice, this is, you know, one photo of me in like kind of business attire. This is me um, in some running clothes. This is me after a race holding up an age group award. If you didn't know me and you landed on all these places, there might be this kind of visual dissonance where you wouldn't 
uh, be able to have a through line of who I am. One, if you're just getting started in building and developing your brand, one of the things you want to do is have the most, um, you know, real, authentic, up to date picture that you can and use the same picture across all the platforms because that will ensure that people, you know, have that visual marker. Uh, that through line that they can follow as they get to know you. Um, you know, one of the ways to expand people and their connection to you and your memorability to them is to have them see you in all the different multiple places on the internet. So this one was from my website. This one was from Instagram uh, or Facebook. And this one was from Instagram. And, you know, the ideal situation would be to have those all match, use the same image everywhere, and then people uh, can get to know you. You also want to have your visual brand be consistent as it relates to um, the descriptions that you use for yourself. You want to make sure that it's up to date. Uh, you want to make sure that if you have a particular topic area that you want to be known for, that you are regularly sharing content on those topics across the channels, because it's the regular sharing of value on a particular topic area that helps you become memorable for that topic. Um, and, it, you know, it's perfectly okay to explicitly use those words to tell people your areas of expertise. So in that, you know, Instagram bio or LinkedIn bio or wherever you want to share your brand, you know, you can say, you know, um, so my friend Dennis is on the call. Dennis, I'm going to pick on you for a minute. Client Dennis. Um, Dennis wants to be known for this remarkable journey that he took from being a bus driver to leading a team of over 250,000 people in business. Um, and so he's going to want to carry that through line um, across all of the places where he's showing up online. Dennis, I hope I articulated that uh, accurately for you. Um, all right, so as you think about branding, what you wanna do is, is really go through these four steps. And I just wanna mention that there's a whole chapter about this in my book. Um, and so if you haven't already gotten a copy of my book, Reach, I would encourage you to do so. There is a, a chapter, I think it has the name, What Do You Want to Be Known For? And in it, I do outline these four steps. Uh, the first one is really defining. And this is the place where you have choices about how you want to bring your online presence to others. It's a, it's kind of like defining or choosing. It's identifying how you want to answer that question. You know, what do I want to be known for? Um, in what area is my expertise? You know, what value do I bring? What's different about me? You want to clarify um, how how you talk about your brand. You know, you want to do things like making sure you have a, a cohesive visual identity across the internet with photos and colors. Um, along the way, you want to also discover um, how your brand might be landing with others. And you want to discover the audience um, that's resonating with your work. Um, and you want to discover along the way how you might shift and change the way you talk about the value that you bring in order to connect with the audiences that you want to. And then again, I, I think I mentioned a few times that you have choices. And so you can decide um, about the value that you want to bring and the ways you want to bring it to audiences over time. So I am going to sh stop sharing for a moment. There's a couple new uh, questions. And thank you, Sally, for saying that my book is a great resource. Um, Jane says, it sounds like one excellent headshot photo is important. Is that right? And then she said, my brand is helping and supporting people who need admin type work. No phone calls. Really? No phone calls. Interesting. All right. So, you know, I don't know that you need to have only just one headshot, Jane, but I do think that especially for someone who is just beginning to build an audience, it's helpful to use a consistent headshot. The other thing is, you know, we joke about this a lot and we were just joking about it earlier in the office. I told you, you know, oh, this prospective client thought I was young. Um, kind of my biggest pet peeve around this whole branding thing is when you take a headshot and then you keep the same one for 20 years. You know, up-to-date images are really helpful because what you want is you want to show up um, in person the same way as you show up online or you want to show up online the same way as you show up in person. So if you have a photo from 2002 and it's 2022, then if someone meets you in person, they're going to like have a lot of dissonance with that. So um, always, you know, own your age, own your wisdom, own your expertise. Um, and the more authentic your photo can be to what people will experience when they meet you in real life, the better off um, you will be as it relates to, 
to building your brand. The other thing that I would say is every single interaction that you have with someone, whether it's online or offline, is an opportunity to build your brand. So every post that you write, every email that you write, um, and you know, behind every brand, there are values. And so if you're struggling as it relates to figuring out how you want to show up in online spaces, one thing might be is to go back to, you know, what are the values that are most important to me personally, or what are the values that are most important in my business? And then you can think about, okay, how do I live out those values with the things I'm posting, with the ways I'm interacting online? Um, and then you can become known really for those values that you have in the world. I will give you an example of that. Uh, one of the values I have in my life and also in my business is the value of generosity. I always wanna give as much as I can, particularly time, energy, um, expertise to others. If I have the chance to interact with you, I wanna be sure that every interaction contributes value to your journey. And yesterday I was interviewing an author for my podcast. It's an episode that's gonna come out in a couple of weeks. And I've met this woman, I think, on the phone once and then had some email exchanges. She was a prospective client. She did not end up hiring me, but I really enjoyed her. And one of the things she said while we were recording the podcast is, you know, if you know Becky, you know she's generous. Like, but Martha, you hardly know me. How do you know I'm generous? So there's something in the way that I interact in online spaces that uh, that portrays that. So whatever your values are, you want to think about is the way that I'm interacting in online spaces helping people to see those values? Um, I never really thought about uh, values as it relates to, you know, how you express them through your online presence. So that's all brand new for you today. All right, so uh, we are coming to the end of the formal content of this presentation, but I am open to your questions. And I also had a crazy idea earlier. Um, one of the ways uh, that we could interact at this point for the remainder of the time that we have together is if there's someone on the call who wants to talk face to face with me about your brand. Um, what I can do is I can bring you over the webinar wall. And if you have a camera available and audio available, you can ask me your question face to face and I'd be happy to bring you over that webinar wall. Um, to be a case study on branding. So if there's anyone who would like to do that in the bottom of your zoom panel, there is a hand raise function. If you raise your hand, I will see it and I can bring you over the webinar wall uh, and you can talk with me face to face. It looks like I have a volunteer. Amazing. Okay. I am promoting to panelist Bev K, which might be Bev K's assistant. Not sure. Maybe it, maybe it's Bev K herself. It looks like it is not. Um, I think you'll need to unmute. Hi, sorry. No, it's her assistant. Yeah. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. And everybody is still on the call, right? This is like yeah, everybody. Everybody's okay, still cool. on the call. Yeah. Everybody's um, still my here. name is Luba. I am uh, Bev K's assistant. And yeah. That's me. So what do you want to talk about related to branding today, Luba? So I feel like my uh, boss, Bev, like has her brand very clear. Obviously, she's been doing her work for like 40 years. She's like you said, she does career development, but she does it in like a modern way that's very easy to digest, very simple. And um, I'm still while working here, like thinking about myself and who I want to be as like I'm older um, I'm 25 right now. And like, I kind of think of branding a lot as like in simple terms, just kind of like on Instagram, like, what are you posting about yourself? Like, what are you, what are your values? Like, what do you look like? What do you care about? Mm -hmm. But eventually I do want to like have my own business and kind of be on that way. And I am reading your book right now. Um, it's just, I'm not, re it takes me a while to read, but, um, yeah, I was, my question is like, how do you start developing your brand, which might not be relevant to everybody here. Maybe everybody here already has their brand, but how do you really begin? Like, what is, I don't know, what do I want to sell? Or like, what do I want to give to the world when you have like different talents and like a lot of them, I guess. Yeah. Well, that is an excellent question. And I'm so, so, so glad that you came over and asked that. So one of the things I talk about in the book is related to being a beginning beginner. And basically, when you're a beginning beginner, you may not know yet what you want to contribute to the world. Um, and maybe you haven't, you know, you're really just starting 
So both in your online life and your offline life, you, you're kind of figuring things out. Now that can be true at 25. For me, it was true at age 40. So those of you who know a bit about my journey, I had left workforce to raise kids. When I started to get in online spaces, I didn't have a clear path forward. Part of it really is a discovery driven process, Luba. It's like, you know, trying stuff, you know, um, it's knowing potentially identifying, you know, what your strengths are, what your interests are and, and dabbling in that. So I'll just pick something random um, because I have kids not much younger than you. Um, so my daughter, Natalie, likes to make jewelry and, you know, she'll make it for her friends, for gifts or whatever. It's beautiful. So she could like try that out. She could start to talk about jewelry baking. She could talk, start to like show pictures of the jewelry she's making if she wanted to, to grow that kind of contribution. I'm sure that as I say that there's something in your life like that, too. Um, whatever you're passionate about, whatever you enjoy doing in your spare time, it could even be something you enjoy doing at work. And like in your role with Bev, you might see like, hey, I've got a great handle on, you know, what it takes to be a great admin. You know, you could create content about that. Just start to try it out. And as you go, you can see what people respond to, what, what seems to get traction. Um, and, you know, over time, one of the things you might want to do if you haven't already is buy your name as a domain so that mm -hmm. someday if you want to have a business or you want to have a thought leadership brand, you have that kind of home online connected to your name where you can build that out. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if this is a super great answer, but it, it definitely can take time to figure it out. No worries. Um, something else that I was thinking that I think about too is like, for example, something with well, the difference between like something that you like doing versus like having the knowledge or the expertise in it. So for example, like I really love public speaking, but when I think about it, like I don't know what I would public speak about because I haven't written any books. I haven't done any case studies. I don't have a PhD, et cetera. So like in that specific example, how would you find what you want to like be in front of an audience and talk about if you don't have an expertise? Yeah, that's a good question. So as it relates to the the desire to speak, one of the things I would say is like follow other people who are speaking. Um, you know, start to like look for and maybe because you're in the business space with Bev, like on Instagram, you could start to follow people who are speaking. You could look for people who are talking about what it takes to be a great speaker and see what they're sharing. Sometimes before you can be a creator, you have to be a curator. So I don't know if you know that word curator, but someone who curates content is someone who's finding other people's subject matter expertise and like sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. So that might be a, like, that's not going to help you figure out the topic that you want to speak about. Um, but it would at least, you know, kind of get you some practice at um, just having role models for how you show up in the world. Um, the other thing is potentially like thinking back over, you do have 25 years of life experiences. One of the homework assignments I would give you is like do a timeline of your life. Like what are the high places on your journey? You know, um, what are the things that are unique about your particular perspective? You know, is it like what were the formative events in your life? And you may start to see a thread emerge. Um, Dennis says you may not have a unique message yet, but you definitely have a unique perspective and unique experiences. So like just kind of figuring out who you are and who's made you who you are now, there might be things that you're not even thinking of yet. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Thank you so much. Oh, it's totally my pleasure. So as we come to the end of the half hour, um, I want to just let you know about a couple of action steps. Um, Luba, it was great meeting you. If I can be of help Thank to you. you further, I'm going to um, send you back, back over to an mm -hmm. attendee as I wrap up. Good. All right. So a couple more slides to look at here. And boy, that was fun. Um, so one of the things I want to let you know is that we have an upcoming workshop. It's called the Reach More Readers Workshop. This topic of branding is the first of about 10 or 11 topics that I cover in the workshop. At the moment, it is scheduled for October 20th and 21st, which is next Thursday and Friday. And I'm going to, in a moment, I'll put a link in the chat. If you're interested in signing up and attending the workshop, this is a quick commercial. Don't leave though, because I have a giveaway after this and you don't want to miss it. Um, we do have a survey about the workshop. We have been um, struggling uh, if I can be authentic to fill the workshop. And we're not sure if it's because of the price point, because of the timing or something else entirely. So we have in the past delivered the workshop two afternoons from noon to five Eastern on a Thursday and a Friday. 
and we've done that three times. We've gotten great reviews. People love it. It's a ton of value in a short amount of time. Um, but over this year, uh, we have not been getting signups. So we're curious, is this something that would be better delivered across more days, fewer hours? So I have a survey. I'm going to put it in the chat. Anyone who fills out the survey, what we're going to do is um, I just decided this today. I have more shirts like this. Uh, th these are our Weaving Influence 10th anniversary t-shirts. If you fill out the survey, give us your name and email address. If you're in the United States um, and you fill out the survey um, and you tell me what size shirt you want, we will send you a t-shirt for filling out the survey. Um, so if you could please, please take a minute um, to fill out the survey and give us your feedback about the workshop. I would really appreciate that. Um, and so I'm about to give you two links. This is why I need a chat host. Jane, next time I nominate you. Um, okay, so the first link that I just put in the chat is the is the survey. Fill out the survey. If you would like a t-shirt, tell us what size. Um, as a thank you for doing the survey about the workshop, we will get you a t-shirt. And then the next link I'm gonna share with you is the link where you can register for the workshop. Um, I would love to have you join me. It's a very small group. It's very intimate. We um, have an amazing time together. It's the relationship building across that workshop that is so powerful for people. So um, take a look at the survey, take a look at the workshop. And I think I have one more thing for you. Let's take a look um, together. That's the workshop sign up. Let's go back to my slides. Yeah. Okay. So the other thing is I would, of course, always love to communicate and connect with you. You can find me on all the social media channels. Um, my company is at weavinginfluence.com. My personal brand is at beckyrobinson.com. I uh, encourage you to get my book if you haven't already. And please feel free to reach out to me via email at any point if I can support your journey. So um, I'm going to stop the recording here and uh,